Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today I'm going to be telling you how you can improve your internet connection on your Nintendo Switch. And yes, this includes Wi Fi and wired connections and everything in between. Spoiler alert, there isn't anything in between. It's no secret that the Switch's Wi-Fi is not ideal. I mean, I personally have had no issues with it, but I've seen so many people who have that clearly maybe my flat is great for it, I don't know. But many people have issues, and so that's what we're here to hopefully remedy. We're gonna walk you through five different steps. You can do all of them, you can just do some of them, you can do none of them if you're that way inclined, but then why are you watching the video? maybe entertainment, I'm not here to judge. If you happen to be very technically minded, then some of these things you may already know and have already tried, but even so we want to be as broad as possible so that we can help as many people as possible who maybe don't understand what an SSID is. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling, let's dive right into things. The very first thing you should do is make sure you're on a delicious 5 GHz signal. If you don't know, there are two kinds of Wi-Fi connection that you'll generally find in your home. 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. The one we just said. 2.4 GHz is better at penetrating walls and other solid surfaces, and was the tip-top standard for so many years that it's almost frightening. So why am I telling you to change that around if 2.4 GHz is so lovely? Well, truth be told, almost every single wireless device in your home will use the same frequency, such as Joy-Con, Pro Controllers, wireless controllers for other systems, your phone, anything with Bluetooth, it's all 2.4 4 gigahertz, and that gets very messy very quickly. That many signals all on the same frequency can start to cancel each other out in small parts, or interfere. For the most part, it's not really an issue, but if you use a 5 gigahertz connection, not only will you have faster speeds at your disposal, not that the Switch can properly take advantage of them, but you'll also have your connection weaving in and around all the traffic jams in 2.4 gigahertz, like some fanciful slimline lightweight two-wheeled motor car. That not only potentially means more speed, but way more importantly, more reliability, and that is the most important thing when it comes to gaming online. Realistically, there's very little data bounding back and forth between you and the server or the other console or whatever, but you do want it to get there as quickly and as completely as possible, and using a 5 GHz signal will solve that. To do this, you just need to connect to your router's 5G signal, which usually has the same name or SSID as your normal connection, but with 5G at the end as default. Some routers will use exactly the same name for their 5 GHz signal as they do for their 2.4 GHz signal, and these can die in a fire. You can probably change that in your router settings, I don't know, I don't know what router you've got. If it came directly from your internet service provider, it's probably a bit wanky. You may find that you have trouble getting as strong a signal as you like if your home has a lot of thick walls or non-thick ones, but with wire mesh inside as my friend found out shortly after he bought his flat. Ah! But if you can get a good signal, 5 GHz is always is the better option. And if you can't get a signal... It sounds silly, but honestly, the placement of your router is one daring donkey of a factor in how good your signal is. It can affect range, stability, ba basically, your placement of your router can affect your connection to make it better or worse. Now, as should be obvious, there are going to be some limiting factors in where you can place your router, and you should always get your parents' permission before you do anything like this, even if you don't live with them anymore. Mum, can I move my router? Why are you asking? Once you've got that figurative green light, it's time to start moving that sucker. My router is placed here, next to the TV, and underneath my switch. This is a terrible location. So what can we do about it? Well, I'm moving out of here soon, so there's little point in me actually moving it, so let's just pretend. Placing it up high is a relatively sound practice. The antenna or antennae, if you're fancy like me, spit the signal out in all manner of different directions, including kind of sort of down-ish, and that means that if it's low down, all that signal that's shot out on the lower 180% split 
is essentially wasted. Some of it might bounce off the floor a bit, but it's almost always better to put your router somewhere high up because you're paying for those signals. You might as well use them. What's more, your router should be as central to your home as possible. In an ideal world, it would be slap bang in the center with absolutely no regard to how no clipping never works in real life, but that's rarely practical as you've got to have a power cable, the ADSL or coaxial in, and potentially some ethernet if you're going to go all wired on this router's ass. More about that later. Use your noggin, find somewhere that's relatively central to your home as a whole, but still within a sensible, clean distance of your required ports to the national grid and the big underwater cables that deliver the hottest memes. Also, try and avoid placing it near other electrical equipment if at all possible. TVs, consoles, and especially any of those things or anything else that's also spewing out wireless signals. Large metal sheets in all of these things can impair performance and it will make you a sad bunny. It's not gonna kill your internet entirely, but you might as well get the most out of it, you know? Maybe even consider wall mounting it if you're crazy enough to do that. I'm not, but you might be. As for the antenna or antennae, well, if they're internal, you'll just have to have it as it is. But if you've got these wonky bad boys like me, you can reposition them to better lob out internet to everything, including your switch. Generally, everyone has a different idea as to what is best, but I think personally, in my experience, if you've got two or more stories to think about, it's probably a good idea to have at least one perpendicular to the other, or 45 degrees, whatever that's actually called. Just fiddle around with them, try them out in different orientations, and see what's tasty. But none of that will make a huge difference if... All routers run on different channels. These range from around 1 to 14 for 2.4 gigahertz and around 34 to 161 for 5 gigahertz. The numbers themselves don't really matter. What matters is what's on what channel. By default, most routers are set to auto and this is a bit dire. It means one day your signal can be great and the next day it's pants as it's just decided to swap things around based on some factors I can't be bothered to comprehend. I've had most success with just choosing a channel and checking every couple of months to see if the landscape has changed, and usually it hasn't. To do this, you're gonna need to go into your router's settings. Every router is different, but you'll usually find the settings you want to fiddle with in wireless, Wi-Fi, or something to that effect. And it'll probably be in the advanced section for advanced people. Look for channel and, whoa, hang on, hang on. What channel do you want to change it to? Well, you could just pick one at random, but that is an unmitigatedly terrible idea. Don't do it. Instead, download a Wi-Fi scanner app on your phone. I'm using this one on Android, which is really good and it's free. So there'll be a link to that in the description. If you're on iOS, I'm sure you can find something suitable. If you're on Windows phone, you need a new phone. There are apps like this for Windows and Mac OS even has it built in, but it's just much easier to use a mobile device. When you load it up, it'll scan the air for all and every single Wi-Fi signal, even those without SSIDs, and show you what channel they're on. Just like life, you want to avoid everyone else. Find a gap that no one's using and pick that number. Bingo bango. If there are no gaps, wow, you live in a built-up area. If that's the case, just choose the channel with the lowest overall number of other networks on it. Go back to your router's settings, slap in the channel that's the emptiest, ideally on the 5 GHz connection, but you might as well change both, and you'll have a stronger, less populated channel to enjoy. But what if it's just way too busy? What if there's, there's nothing that you're going to be able to do to get a good Wi-Fi connection? Well... Wired connections. I said we'd get onto it. If you're playing Smash Online or just generally playing something with a lot of precision over the internet, it's best to use a wired connection in pretty much every case. As Nintendo didn't think it was worth it, there is no Ethernet port on the Switch, fair enough, or the dock, not fair enough. However, you can buy yourself an Ethernet to USB adapter to solve all these woes and maybe more. Just make sure it lists itself as being compatible with the Nintendo Switch, as some for some reason just aren't. Plug 
plug it into the dock, slap an Ethernet cable between it and the router, and hey presto, wired connection. Well, sort of hey presto. You may need to go into your Switch's settings in order to tell it that you want to use a wired connection and that you've not just plugged in an Ethernet cable for aesthetic purposes. Thankfully, it's easier than an easy lemon pie piece of walk in the park. Just go to System Settings, Internet, Internet Settings, and then scroll all the way to the bottom of the Registered Networks list. Maybe that's, that's the first list, ignore the second one. And you will see Wired Connection as an option. Select it and it'll run a test. Should that all go tickety-boo? And it should. You're done. Now, if you remembered what speed you got when you ran a connection test over Wi-Fi, you may be surprised to find that it may no longer be all that glamorous on your new Wired Connection. That's because the USB-C connection that the signal is passing through has a lot of other gubbins going through it as well. And although I think it would have been relatively possible to get more speed through it, Nintendo have limited it for some reason. Now, don't go on doing all your hard work just yet, as although you may not be able to download things quite as quickly as before, you will have a significantly, significantly more stable connection. And as we said previously, that is what online gaming is all about. If you do want to download something big quickly, just lift your console out of the dock and leave it to do so over Wi-Fi if your internet is oh so speedy you show off. But seriously, nothing can beat a wired connection for reliability, at least for the moment so it's well worth doing. Not only that, but it's also one less signal flying around and sucking all the internet out of the air for your other devices, which is just dandy. But what if you really, really want just that little bit of extra speed? Well, we have one last thing for you. The Switch, just like every internet-enabled device, downloads data in packets. These packets come in varying sizes, but if you want speed, then you won't be surprised to know the bigger is better. You can increase your Switch's MTU, or Maximum Transfer Unit, to allow for more data to be shipped back and forth every time it pings. Most helpful indeed. To do this, you need to head back into System Settings, then Internet, then Internet Settings, select your wired connection, or Wi-Fi connection if you can be bothered with Ethernet, go to Change Settings, scroll down, and you should see that sweet, sweet MTU. Change that number from 1400 to 1500, and butter my biscuits if you just haven't increased your packet size by... 6 6.6666666666. Six 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 percent. Well done. If it was already set to 1500 in your settings, well, the last point is pointless, sorry. And there you have it. That's how you can improve your Switch's internet connection through many different means. And more importantly, unless you're buying an ethernet adapter, no money at all. We'd love to hear if you had success with any of these tips, or if you've got your own tips that you want to share in the comments, then do that. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you upgrade that subscribe button onto a five gigahertz network, because that really is the best thing you can do. And be sure to check out Nintendo Life.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,